welcome to Plant Parenthood. I'm Andrea and today I want to talk about pots and plants. If you're someone like me, you are a collector or you're an aspiring collector or you really just like a lot of plants because the problem that we're going to solve today really goes towards people who have a lot of plants. Maybe not even a lot, but maybe you're aspiring, your plant collection is growing and you're not hoarding, you're collecting. So it becomes more and more valuable for the plants that you love to live in a pot that you love too. So I finally feel like I'm in a space where I can talk about it. In my home, I have many plants. I think over over 100. Yeah, we're definitely over 100 today. And each plant has a pot. And sometimes I wonder, do I buy the pot first? Do I buy the plant first? Can I have a plant without a pot? Um, do I switch them up? And how often do I move them to make sure they're in the perfect spot? Uh, so my family doesn't care, of course not. Um, that's why I'm talking to you. So um, I'm so excited to share this time with you and talk to you about plants and pots and really give me some ideas and hopefully you find some uh, pretty plants along the way that we'll talk about and some pots that we can talk about. I will even tell you about where to find some cool pots and what plants go with specific types of pots or what I have found in my years of putting plants and pots together. So um, let's get started. All right, so we're in my office and um, as you see, I have a lot of plants in here at the moment for to share with you. And, and this is kind of fun because there are, oops, I'll show like this. Um, so there are containers that you could put together that maybe originally weren't for plant containers, but this evolved into a plant container. I think it looks super awesome. And I finally found three pots that fit perfectly into it. Um, these pots are for um, four inch uh, plants, as you see at the Sansevieria in there. And really, if you're going to have a lot of plants, I was kind of into terracotta for a hot minute, but really I think that the best thing that you can do is keep your plants in the nursery pot that you buy them in and find a pot that is of good quality. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive, but ceramic is a good choice as well as um, possibly a little bit of plastic, maybe even a little metal, but typically I like to veer towards um, towards ceramic. You could even do a little terracotta if that's um, your drug of choice. Um, but I really don't, I, I lean towards towards ceramic and they're easy to find. And what I like is when you find a pot, they're actually harder to find than the plant. The plant's the easy part. You, you get an eight, eight inch plant um, and the pot might be this big, this tall I mean, or it could be this tall. So it really depends on the plant. So I do have um, several plants that have like a short they're short eight inch plants and then they I also have um, high eight inch plants and sometimes a pot doesn't doesn't um, fit properly so I think it's important for it to be a snug fit um, I'd rather your plant be too short for the pot than the pot too short for the plant so that really brings up a lot of other issues when you can see the nursery pot I think it looks kind of tacky and I've run into that a few times I've been that person so with this one I really love this pot. This is, oh, this needs to get watered, I think. Um, this is from Ikea. I do buy most of my pots uh, pots from Ikea because they're ceramic, they're beautiful, and they're relatively inexpensive. Um, I like to lean towards white pots, as you can see, but I'm kind of getting into a little bit of texture, a little bit of attitude, um, but really you are really safe with white pots. and. Um, if you're going to have like a display piece, I recommend to have all the same pots, um, same color, but like the same texture and the same family. So right here, finally I'm able to get this baby together. I just need to buy some pop, uh, plants for it, which is a pleasure. And we'll go on to the next one. So there's, right here, this is an anthurium. I do believe this is an anthurium. Um, my aunt gave it to me. Thank you if she's watching. Um, but I like this pot that it came in. I actually did not decide to change it, but it came in its uh, nursery pot. I don't know if my aunt actually repotted this or not, but um, this is metal and it really, it's really um, inexpensive if you could buy the plant with the pot right away, but really like the pot. I mean, you want to make sure that the pots that you're buying you're passionate about. I mean, you see them all the time. They're going to be in your home for a long time. So you have to be really picky about the decor you bring into your home, as well as the plants you bring into your home, right? Don't be like a plant uh, foster parent where you're just picking up plants that people don't want. You really want to love the plants that you own because you're going to take care of them. You're going to give them a long life, hopefully, and 
you don't want it to be an eyesore along the way. So with this Anthurium, this isn't a metal pot and I like the texture of it, but I like it because it's white. White goes well. And especially if this is next to some other white plants, which I usually have it in my living room. Um, but it, lo it looks really pretty, Anthurium. And then I'm always constantly propagating. So I'm experimenting right now with the ZZ, um, ZZ Zen C. I think it looks beautiful. Um, it was getting a little la lengthy in my room and starting to slouch a little bit. So I thought, oh, why? I know this, I heard these take forever to root and water, but I got time, just keep it in a brightly lit spot. And what I use for my pots for propagating is just random, random bottles. So this one I think used to have like a, um, like a nectar in it of some sort in, or a juice, yeah, juice of some sort. But I thought, wow, this is a beautiful vase. And what I love is instead of buying flowers, you can actually take cuttings of your plants. Let's say they're getting overgrown like this um, ZZ Zensi was, and you can actually then make it into a display piece and you can watch those roots grow. So instead of it dying in a few weeks, it's giving life, which is the best. And just as pretty if you ask me. Oh, and here's another one too, right behind here. Ta-da! This is not going to root. I, I know it's not going to, but it's been like this for over a week and hey, they look, they look fresh. I cut them because clearly this one's ripped off, but I still, I still think they're so beautiful. This is the Peperomia watermelon. So this Hoya was just a cutting um, four years ago and now all of it. Look at that baby, it's just, just beautiful. But Hoyas, I find, because they can get so bushy and so big, um, they can do really well in a tall pot or in a basket. So um, these baskets are, I think I bought for like three bucks or something. Um, and these are not obviously meant for plants, but whatever, I'm using it as a plant plant container. And I'm keeping it in its nursery pot. And actually I've up potted this several times. So it's actually a random nursery pot um, that probably held some, some plants for the outdoors. Oh my goodness, you are attached everywhere. Um, so I kept it in its nursery pot with a saucer on the bottom. I have a terracotta saucer down there. And look at how pretty it looks because it takes over the basket. So you don't have to actually focus on the basket as much or the pot as much, but it looks so amazing in it. So if someone happens to see it, it's not sitting naked. And so these next pots are not in ceramic. They're actually in some fancy terracotta. And I love them. Um, I really even hate to move them too hard. Um, but look how beautiful that is. So it really matters where you keep your plants. Of course, these are in brightly lit spots. Hoyas do great in brightly lit areas. Um, this is in my living room. And I have it on top of my mantle. And it's paired up with another vining plant. So I like to, like I said, if I'm going to put, did I say it in this video? But I like to put plants on display that are similar, that have similar watering needs, similar lighting needs. And maybe even act a little similar or look like they're twins or related in some way. So though, these, though this is actually a uh, philodendron micus, it is a vining plant and I wanted a vining plants off of my mantle, but I have them in the same pot, okay? So it's matchy matchy. Um, that's what I'm all about here. And though these are in, um, in terracotta, I like this terracotta because it's kind of a unique terracotta and I like how it's so rounded and um, really gives the plant a little bit of extra life. So, oh, they're, the Hoya's trying to attach. The funny thing about Hoya's, by the way, is they start getting a little crazy and start um, expanding out on you like this. And you think, oh no, is it gonna climb on my walls and stay on there? No, it's not going to. Once the leaves come in, it actually does drop and get quite heavy. And, oh, there's, oh this one has um, flowers on it right now but it's going to actually drop and be heavy. So you don't have to worry about it kind of climbing up and um, making a new home in your, um, I guess, it doesn't have to vine that way onto your walls. Um, so yeah, so they do get um, heavy and then, oh look at this ovovod also has stuff coming in there. Um, oh, distracted, sorry. But anywho, so yeah, so these are on display together. So they look good, I think, together. Um, and I'll show you a little video of that too. And then we also have back here, we have more pots. So this one is actually the one I'm not 100% sure on. Out of the 100 plants I have in my home, this is the one where I'm like, eh, is this the right pot for the right plant? Because this pot, though absolutely stunning, it's also an Ikea buy. Um, this, this Peperomia Marble, I think is this one. Um, it's in a really short, it's a little shorter. So, oops, so you can see where I bought that from. Um, it's a little shorter and kind of gets 
swell it up into the pot a little bit. So I thought, okay, well maybe this will grow out a little bit more and it will start filling up the space, um, but it's just as wide. But I would rather have the pot too big than the plant too big. Um, I have a few in my home right now that I'm like, eh, debating if I should move because I can kind of see like just a teeny tiny bit of the nursery pot. Um, and I don't know how I feel about that. It's, it kind of looks like a little, little tacky, um, but it's so minor. Um, I'll show it to you too. But um, this is, I mean, I like the cylinder shape of this and it's very, very clean with a little bit of texture and a little bit of personality versus just kind of like a stale, modern, soulless white pot. Um, but I would say that I bought actually already two of these. I have a um, Monstera Adesonia in my bedroom that looks perfect. I didn't want to bring it down this video because I just love where it lives. Once you find that exact spot where it belongs with the perfect pot and you see it all the time, there's some satisfaction. I mean, decor is so hard to come by, perfect decor for your home. You really have to be picky about what you bring in, pots included, plants included. So once you find that spot, you definitely want to keep it there and be thankful you found it. <laughs> um, this is not usually where I keep it. This is usually my bedroom. But look at this thing, it is beautiful. So I do have it in a very nice eggshell white pot. It actually kind of feels like an egg too, so it's not shiny. Um, and you also want to be, sorry, I don't, can you hear me? Um, if it's in one of these types of pots, oh, I should pull this off too. But um, if it's in one of these types of pots, you wanna make sure it does have a saucer. This one's attached, um, but it needs to have a drainage hole. That's why you wanna keep it in its nursery pot so you don't have to find, um, you don't have to find pots that have drainage holes. These are just for display. And once your plant starts outgrowing its pot, you don't have to worry about, um, about kind of digging it out and uh, digging it out of an actual pot. Keep it in its nursery pot, it will be fine. And this one, yeah, look at it, I just love it. I mean, it's very, very pretty. And it makes sense because there's so much going on with the leaves here. I mean, look at the, Calathea has really earned their name with how beautiful they are. Uh, finicky, but beautiful. That the pot doesn't need to be distracting. Honestly, let's keep the, let's keep the pot simple with my Calatheas the elephant in the room here. So this is one of my pots where it does not fit the plant perfectly. You see that right there? And the saucer is real, so the saucer actually comes off. So it's actually one of my first plant purchases or pot purchases. And it's kind of an off-white, it's more of a cream, but I cannot find a different pot for this plant. This is a string of pearls. I do believe it's a string of pearls. Look at it, it's so beautiful. I have this in a very light, uh, brightly lit area. It's in my living room and actually I just moved it from my office recently, but it's kind of bald on the top um, and actually should have a little bit more grow there. Um, but I just can't find a different pot for it. Though it's a little bit off, this is the one that I debate because I'm like, oh, well, no one's paying attention because they they see it um, cascading, like growing, trailing down like hair. Uh, and I do like this pot, I really do. Um, for how old it is and it was kind of one of my first babies. So uh, this is one I do debate, but I think it looks pretty good. Tell me, I guess. Um, because the other pot, like this one, you don't want it to actually, this is actually an exception to my rule about the plant not being too big for the pot. Sometimes I say, hey, have them you know, go into the pot a little bit more. This type of plant does not look good without you seeing the top. If you see it kind of just kind of coming out like little snakes, um, it will not look as pretty. Um, its beauty really is in the top and seeing that it, that it grows out of a pot. Um, so the same thing with this um, Hoya Lin, what is this one called? I'll, I'll write it down. But um, this one I did buy in a large and look at this, the beauty is in the top too. So this one you also don't want draining or like looking like it's coming, creeping out of a pot. So for this one I had to, I do believe cheat a little bit and I had to get a saucer on the bottom. So you can get a saucer that uh, is terracotta, don't, don't pay an arm and a leg for it, but um, it will actually add some height to your plant if you wanna put it into a pot. So let me show it to you actually without, without the saucer on the bottom because it makes a huge difference. It doesn't look as good, it does not look. So look at this, see? It looks a little empty right there, right? It looks like it needs something, so that's why I, um, these type of plants, these two, these specific plants, um, really need a saucer on the bottom. Ta-da, and they're so clean. Oh, it's so clean when there's a saucer there too. And I love this pot. So though it's white, it has personality. 
And this is an Ikea buy. This is totally go to Ikea. They have the best selection, um, at least locally for me, they do. So there you go, beautiful. Propagating, ah. <laughs> This was also, this actually was for a different plant. I think like a, like a tulip bulb a few years back and I just kept it. And then look at, oh my goodness, this is a very fast growing plant. Um, I also bought this for my office, um, away from my home and I love it. And this one also is an exception to my rule where it's a little bit above the, oh, this is a little pinched, um, oh, poor baby, um, that is above the pot. So the size was kind of weird. This is actually in a six, a six or eight inch. This is an eight inch pot and it's short. So you see how it's short? Um, and it also is so bushy and it grows so fast that you can barely see this pot. But I love this um, pot that I have it in. So this saucer does not come off. So when you're moving it and there's water in there, it can actually spill out and it has happened to me uh, many times. Wow, I just love it. Um, but and it's so heavy. It's beautiful. But because this plant has a lot to say on its own, um, the pot doesn't, the pot seems secondary, but just as important. Um, so for this one, like I said, it doesn't fit perfectly, but when I was at the store, I was in a huge rush because I was trying to decorate my office and I just want to kind of turnkey solutions. I was like, I'm just going to buy a pot here with the plant that I buy. So this is actually all from Home Depot. Um, so Home Depot has so many great plants from really basic house plants to ones that, uh, frankly are a little bit more rare. And the price is right. Um, they're very inexpensive compared to my my local nursery. Oh, this is gonna drive me crazy. I gotta fix it now. Where I have, okay, there. I don't like to pinch any of my plants. Um, so look at this, beautiful. But yeah, you can barely see that it's coming out of the top, but you do see all the new growth. Um, this is in a brightly lit spot too. Ta-da! And this is a little big for how high up I have it. This could be more of a staple piece on a, on like the side of the table. Here's my Calathea orbifolia. Um, I, it, it's been with me since it was considered a rare plant. Now I feel like you can find it anywhere. Um, and I stubbornly am keeping this one around though there's not that many leaves to, to uphold its integrity. Um, this is actually a new leaf right there. But uh, you could go to the store and find one that's extra, extra bushy, that has been well manicured and taken care of. But because Calatheas don't need a lot of light, they do love humidity and a lot of water, um, I do like to keep it in this dark, dark basket. So the basket itself is actually designed for plants. So when you're looking for baskets that maybe aren't designed for plants, just keep in mind to put a saucer on the bottom. But for this one, it actually has a plastic, ah, you can't even see, but it has a plastic um, covering inside. So I can actually really, um, water this significantly and not worry about it going through the bottom. But you want to keep your saucers on the bottom inside the pot and not outside the pot. Um, makes it a lot easier for yourself. But with this one, I think that dark makes sense, especially since the room I have it in is next to a dark painting. Um, it matches the painting. So uh, I do like it and I've really moved it around several times into white pots and to different color pots. And I feel like this Calathea specifically just looks so good with black. Calathea Makayana, I think is how you say it. And I'll be honest with you, this was given to me for Valentine's Day. Thank you, husband. And I do love the plant and I am not going to move the pot. Though, I would disagree that this plant belongs to this pot. So this pot itself has green tint to it. It's very beautiful, it is ceramic. and looks handmade. Um, and I even like how it's kind of a little different here. But it's saying a lot. This is a very loud pot and it deserves to get its attention. However, it's competing for attention with this Calathea because this Calathea, I love seeing new growth. That means that, it, that I'm treating it well. Um, this Calathea, oh, there's actually a bunch of new growth. Wow, look at one, two, three. Awesome, is there more? Um, but this Calathea is like, I think it's called like the peacock. It's, or people call it the peacock. Um, it really needs a plain pot because it's beautiful on its own. I mean, it has so much to say to us and because it's a prayer plant, it goes up and down throughout the day. Um, but really it doesn't need a pot that's 
um, so fancy. Honestly, it'd look really nice in a white pot, but because it's given to me from my beautiful, lovely, loving husband, um, I think of him. I always think of him and what a sweet, thoughtful present this was because it's tough. It's tough to um, get a plant collector, <laughs> a plant that they don't have and a pot that they don't that they don't have to. So um, this is absolutely not my style, but sometimes you gotta, gotta remember who gave it to you. This is my experiment gone right. So this is a Sansevieria, Sansevieria S-Y-R-U-R-I. Oh my goodness, I'm so bad with them. But I propagated it. So you see there's different colors here. So this is all fresh. These are all part of my propagation. Um, or the, the growth from the five blades that I propagated. So um, what I am so excited about is that I found that Sansevieria's and Hoya's look amazing in baskets. They do it well. So the Hoya, it's, or the Sansevieria itself is so beautiful, so upright and just um, these blades are just awesome and it's just starting to look good. And because it's a much lower, see as you see. And this basket, by the way, um, oh, sorry. This basket is not designed for plants, so I do have a saucer at the bottom um, in its nursery pot, but I just watered it, so ta-da. Yeah, it's a big saucer too. Um, but this one just looks so amazing in a very inexpensive basket. Oh, this is like my newest found love, and I, I, I helped this one. So here is, this is happy beans, I think this one is the happy beans. So a square ceramic pot is hard. I really think it's hard. And this was a propagation of mine that I really couldn't find the right pot for because the plant itself is kind of goofy and I chopped it up for another video. And now it's kind of has some bald spots and really on its own, it's not so cute. Like, look at this. It's super curved and just not symmetrical that I found that this square a uh, pot really just puts it together somehow. And I kind of keep it up high so you can only see like it from a distance. <laughs> and it looks really nice that way. So square pots are awesome too, but you do need the right plant for it. Well, this is, this is called the goldfish plant. I don't know how to take care of it yet, but I bought it in this teeny tiny cute square nursery pot. And I thought, oh, you know what? It actually looks good in my, um, in my terracotta. So how you can test it out too when it comes to terracotta because it's such an irrevocable decision, I feel like. Because when you put it into terracotta, you typically are gonna take it out of its nursery part to nursery pot to um, put it into the terracotta. But I actually just plopped in the nursery pot into the terracotta to see how it looked before I did it. And this one turned out really nice. Remember, the smaller the plant, the more often you have to water it. So the nice thing about terracotta, it actually shows me that it needs to be watered. The, it, changes in color a little bit. I love this though, we'll see. Calathea, this came in this white pot, so, and it's plastic. I love it because it's a great floor plant. You can just see it from the top and it looks beautiful. Calatheas really, I'm telling you, they beg for your attention with their leaves. They do not need a fancy pot um, because their structure is all in their leaves. Like, look at this, it's just really demanding attention here. Stunning. Oh, this got vandalized like yesterday. Children, I tell you. <laughs> um, so this is a ficus alcima, I think is what it's called, um, or yellow gem. It is beautiful. I have it in a tree farm. I mean, look at this stunner, wow. And I find that big plants require really big pots that cost more money than I'm willing to pay for you know the over 100 plants that I have in my home. Baskets, baskets really do me some justice here. So take a look there, especially since they're four, four plants. Um, you just wanna put it into at least a plastic saucer, which I do have a plastic saucer underneath here. I don't know if you can see it, but I made sure to do like an oversized one. Ah, do you even see that? Uh, but it's an oversized saucer. So when I am watering, I can water without having to worry about it overflowing, which sometimes it can still happen. But these oversized saucers are really helpful. Um, this, one, this is one of my favorites too. I've propagated this a few times. Um, this is actually in a very similar pot to what you've seen earlier. It is from Ikea. It's huge. I mean, this is one of, so this pot plant itself is much shorter than the pot, as you can see there, and it fits. I mean, I tried putting a Hoya in here, but Hoyas, the vining plants, really need a pot that's uh, the same size as that plant or smaller because they're just not gonna look good. 
um, kind of trying to come out of a pool. Next, we have a Green Mermaid Sansevieria. Super rare. I've been asked about where to get this. I don't know. You can't find it. Um, hopefully, it'll become mainstream sooner than later. But look at how, because I, ah, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm so excited. Um, because it's such a beautiful plant to me, um, I just love these fibrous blades. And, you know, they're just so dark. And they come in a little light and darken with time that it just, it does remind me of like a whale or just kind of a shark or something. But it is so beautiful to me and very aquatic. But the pot itself is so simple but beautiful. So it is ceramic. It was, um, I don't know, this is, this is a better quality than most of mine. But I thought it was worth the investment because I put it right in my doorway right when you come to my home. But I thought it needed a little oomph, so I bought a um, stand that, that it's on now. Thanks for hanging out and talking about pots and plants with me. It's been awesome. I hope you learned something, maybe fell in love with something. Let me know what you liked and we'll talk again. Thanks so much. Subscribe. Bye.